Hey everybody, this is Austin, Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. I'm going to show you three pieces of art right away. I got all these at a thrift store or a garage sale. Which one of these do you think is the genuine piece of art? It can be pretty tough to tell the difference, just your peepers there, so we'll talk about how to use a jeweler's loop and your phone's camera to identify genuine art versus prints. Now one thing I'll point out in this is that glass is sort of our enemy. If there's glass over the piece of art, it can make it a little tougher to tell whether or not it's real or, you know, a print. But as we look at these, you can see the dots present in the uh, magnified photographs of these pieces of art. Now, if you've got a camera with, say, 4K HD or 1080, whatever, uh, maybe a macro option for shooting pictures, you can get a close-up of a picture, and typically your phone pictures will allow you to see whether or not there are dots in it. Now, the dots are telling you that this is printed on a machine. Uh, whether the dots are fine or what have you, whether they look like an Andy Warhol painting, uh, you know, that part doesn't really make any difference. Dots are dots, so it's a machine printed process. What you're looking for is brush strokes, um, signs that something's hand painted. Now, prints are still worth money, uh, 15 to $30, something like that. You know, maybe higher depending on the subject matter, the quality of the print, uh, the quality of the framing, so on and so forth. So you don't have to ignore everything because it's not a painting, but you know, typically the real money is going to be in handmade art. When we get to this piece, since it's a hand painted object of art, you won't find any dots in these two pictures. This is a painting of the David Dows from the early 20th century, maybe late 19th, but, but yeah, this is what a painting should look like. And this is how you can tell what it is. Now we come to oil paintings, which are a little bit different, but typically there's a texture on oil paintings, making them pretty much the easiest type of painting to find. Um, a little bit of built up three dimensional texture on an oil painting is called impasto. Uh, some artists make that their entire technique. You know, they're using palette knives and big heavy globs of paint. But when you see actual three dimensional texture to a piece of art, then it's probably either an acrylic or oil painting. I've tried to illustrate some of the texture to these pieces in these pictures, so hopefully you can see like in the waves right there, there's quite a bit of texture. Damage is something to watch out for and to prevent if you can. I actually believe I've caused some of these paint chips here, so that's my fault for ruining a piece of art. I feel terrible and uh, obviously a reduced price. Or value I mean obviously you can flip a piece over and look at the back and decide whether or not from the backing material and the hardware whether you think it's aged or you know vintage modern now look how shiny these pieces are right here so brand clean shiny white canvas shiny hanging hardware eyelets wires all of that should be indicative of a pretty modern piece so let's look at an older piece and see what the back of that might look like. Now this doesn't show an old piece of canvas because I'm pretty sure the piece in question is a watercolor, but you can tell just by the patina of the items on the back of this piece that it's likely older than the other pieces. Look how dull the metal is, look how cranged up the wire is. So yeah, just use every piece of evidence and every piece of technology at your disposal and hopefully you'll find something great. This is Austin, Best I Could Afford Antiques Channel. Uh, do as good as you can. <laughs>